All right, squad, back at it again. Today, I'm going to enhance the functionality that we added where you could toggle stream mode. But what I wanna to do today is I wanna commit that to the user's preferences so that when they refresh the screen or if they come back, log out, come back, it's still saved as stream mode. It could be opening a new window, etc. So we wanna store that. So let's jump in. All right, so just a quick refresher. Last time we added in this, you can hit start and stop. And we're storing that currently in a data attribute right here. Data stream mode is false. Turn it on, turns to true, right? So we're doing that through stimulus. We're toggling it over here. But what I want to do as well is I want to send an Ajax request up to the server just so that we can store that against the user. Because in case, like if we turn stream mode on and then we do a refresh, yeah, it probably helps if you turn on the server first. So let's just turn that on. So what happens at the moment is if you turn stream mode on and you refresh, it goes back to off, which was not something we'd want, we'd want to do. So we want to store that against the user. And then what, when the page is refreshed and the layout's here, we're going to inject the user's preference in here so that when it renders from the server, that's ready to set to go, all right? So let's do that. So looking at our user model currently, we don't have anywhere to store this. So what I'd like to do here is I like to add a object, a JSON B object to the user and called options. So we'll do Rails G migration, add options to users. All right, so that's gonna add that migration for us. Now, if we jump down here into DB migrate, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go add column, all right? If I can type. So this will be called to users, options, JSON B default. Perfect, all right. Copilot did that for me. So we're adding to the users table. It's gonna be called options. It's a JSON B. So that's a JSON binary, I believe. It's more efficient uh, when sorting and searching and all those kind of things. So the more uh, modern version in Postgres. The default's an empty object because we will store this as an object and it is nullable. Just to double check myself as well, JSON B is more efficient than JSON because it stores it as binary, whereas JSON itself stores it as text. So it has to be repassed every time at execution. So there we go. So now that we've added this here, well, let's run it. So we're gonna go Rails DB migrate. All right, run that, send it. Here, we've got our options now. And then if we look inside of the users table, we can see there's an empty object, okay? So that's great. So now what we're going to do is in the model, we're going to go into here and we are going to add in, so that's there. We're going to add in a store assessor. All right. And that's not how it works. It's going to be store assessor for options, right? And it's going to be called stream mode. So let's call it stream mode enabled. This is going to allow us here to show we're going to store the stream mode enabled as true or false. It'll be a Boolean and it'll be on the user options here. So now what we can do is if we run Rails C just for a quick test, we go user.last and we can say user.last.stream mode enabled. This will return nil for us, right? But now what we can say is if we say user.last and we can say update. <coughs> enabled here and we're going to say true right so you can see what it's doing here it's automatically setting the options object and setting it all up for us so that's what a store assessor does it's just a nice way to access these as if they were real attributes straight on the model but it's stored inside of a json object just makes it a little bit easier to work with and you can see so we don't have to go like user so usually in javascript or something you do something like this you'd say options equals user dot options or you know an empty object then we're going to say options stream mode is able true and then we're going to say user dot options is options right and that's how we do it so right with rails this is just going to make it really simple we can just go user dot stream mode and have one treat as a first class citizen very useful and we use it a lot <laughs> all right so we've got that now so now what we're going to say here in this application we're going to see here, and we're going to see if we can go current dot user dot stream mode enabled or false. So if it's so if it's 
enabled. We're not going to just pass true. We're actually going to pass in true. Otherwise, we're going to pass in false. Right, and this, what this is doing is just for the init initialization, right? So when we actually set up this page from the server, but then from then our front end can take, take over and it can handle the rest. We just have to make sure we do have a current user because this could be nil. So we just have to add a safety there. Um, and then what we need to also do here is say is equal to true because this could be stream mode enabled. It's not like JavaScript false string isn't falsy. So we do need to actually just check that it is a string called true. Now let's see what happens here. So if we refresh our page, we need to start the server again. So let me just do this. It's like my first time using Rails um, or any server. So here what we can see now is, so the body data stream mode is false, yeah? So what do we have inside of our thing? Hopefully it says true here. Okay, so it's not stored as a string, it's actually stored as, a, so then we can just do this. All right, so if it's, so it is stored as a true, as a Boolean. So that's stored there, it's true. And you can see here, it looks like we're streaming, right? So that means stream mode is turned on. Now if we turn this to false, just in here, Let's hack the DB. If we refresh, now we're defaulting to false. So that's getting in, that's what we're trying to do. So we want to actually set that value and store it. Okay, so we, let's just also double check. So when we click this, this is still functioning. So it can take over. So we'll set this back to true now. True, change it out. It starts as streaming, but we can still toggle that off, okay? But now what we want to do is we want to send an Ajax request back up to the server and we actually want to toggle that value, all right? So the first thing that I want to do is on the controller for users, let's do, so we have an update. We could probably just use that. We could probably just use an update method here, make it simple. You could add a toggle stream mode if you wanted to. I mean, let's do that just for fun because just to show how it's done. So we're going to go here, we're going to say toggle stream mode. I'm um, not, nah, stuff it, no, nah, nah, it's just going to add too much, uh, too many endpoints. We can just use this one, sorry. So firstly, close this off. And then what we're going to use to do this, we're going to use a little library called rails request.js. It's a very small library, but it just wraps basically the fetch logic, but it also automatically sends the CR, CSRF token, right? So that means we don't have to worry about all that and just does it for us. To do this, we're using ES build. So we're gonna just add this. We're gonna add yarn, add rails request JS. All right, so if you look into our package file, we are running yarn lock, sorry, yarn lock file here. All right, and we're running ES build. So we're just gonna run yarn add rails request JS. Shove that in there, let it do its thing. All right, start up the server again. And you can see now it should be there. There it is, 009. And then all we need to do inside of our stimulus method is import this fetch request. We can actually do put, because we want to do a put request. So we don't need to actually use the fetch direct. Now we're going to jump into JavaScript controllers. Actually, no, we built this in our component. That's right, a stream mode toggle component and we jump JS file here. So now what we want to do as well is we can actually do all the work and then we're going to say, we can, can do like um, persist, persist value, all right? So let's import this as well. So firstly, let's import this at the top. So we're going to get the put one, route here. We want this put method. And we're going to say here, is stream mode, right? And that's the Boolean. And then what we're gonna do here is not quite this, but we're gonna say, we also need the current user as well. So we do need to get that. Because this user, when we use an update, we're gonna pass in the user ID, right? In our instance, just to keep it simple, we are not going to know the user ID because we're not gonna have current dot user available in our, to us easily. Like we can get it, but rather than do that, what we'll do is we'll create, we will create an endpoint. So we're gonna say toggle stream mode, right? 
And what this is gonna do is it's gonna use the current users that's logged in, because we know that on the back end, and whoever's logged in, we're gonna to toggle that for them, right? Because you can only toggle your own stream mode. So it's really, it's not a post, it's a put, right? And it's a patch or put, because Rails uses those like that. And then what we're gonna do here is it's gonna be users slash toggle stream mode, okay? And then what we're gonna know is the user is going to be equal to current.user, right? And then we're gonna do, like it says here, user.update. And this is gonna probably be the simplest method. So I second guess myself, I shouldn't have. But so here we go, we're gonna go put um, users slash toggle stream mode, right? So we add that to our routes. Okay, so that's good. Now we've got the user, and then we're gonna say if user.update stream mode enabled is going to be the opposite of user.stream mode enabled, right? And then we're gonna say respond to do format. Interesting how this, this one's actually laid out. It's a little bit different to how I normally do it. I usually do this block in each thing. So this is slightly different. So we're gonna do this and then we're gonna say user update this, not user.stream mode enabled. All right, format HTML, we're gonna go users successfully updated, otherwise we're gonna do that. So it's as simple as that there. Now, in here, let's go. So we're gonna go put, and then let's just grab what this looks like. Okay, so that's an async. And then we're gonna chuck that in here. So we're gonna go const respond is wait post. I like to just drop this out. We actually don't even need any body here. So we don't need this. I wonder if we can grab this local host cause we don't wanna hard code that. And this is just gonna be users slash toggle stream mode. We need to fix this. We need to get the actual um, current URL. And then here we're just gonna go console.log response, all right? So what I'm gonna say here is just after we've done all this, we're gonna persist, then we're just gonna go this dot persist value, and then this is is stream mode. We don't even actually have to need to know that because we don't have to pass it up. We don't need that at all. We don't use that value because we're just gonna to toggle whatsoever's on the server. All right, so let's give that a spin. We do need to fix this up though. All right, let's see if we've, actually doing anything. We click this button. What happened? Post is not defined. Oh, we're using the put. Sorry, my bad. Okay, let's try again. Local host is not supported. Okay, well, it probably needs to be this, like that. SSL protocol error. I didn't type S, there we go. Too many redirects. Okay, we probably have to send this as JSON. There we go. So now we're sending that as JSON. I needed to append that there. And you can see toggle stream mode and, and it's responded with an ID and the URL. And now let's see what it's done to the DB. So that was true. Okay, let's try that again. False. Okay, so that's toggling the user's mode there now. So before it actually, the reason why it looked like it didn't work is because it would have toggled and then couldn't respond properly. So it toggled it and then we it would have swapped. So now we, you can see we turn that on and that toggles, yeah? And now when we refresh the page, it says streaming still, right? So if this user navigates, refreshes, needs to do whatever it needs to do, it'll work. We turn it off and refresh, refresh, refresh. Now we've persisted, okay? So the only thing we need to fix is this, the base URL, because that's not correct. Okay, and just looking at the docs, that's actually really simple to do. We just remove that because this will always be relative to where we're running this page. So I actually don't even know why 
that's included, but this is more clear there, all right? So let's go now and just double check it still works. So do that, it says streaming, I refresh the page, it's still streaming, I can turn it off, turn it back on, all right. And you can see it's, it's updating for the user who's logged in, all right? So you can only, you can only do this when you are logged in. If you log out, so let's see, it won't, you can't actually even get to the screen. So if we go, is it just use or users? Um, that's the users page. We need to fix that. You shouldn't be able to see every user. Um, is it sessions? Log out, all right? Now if we go to projects, such Kanban, you can't even get there, all right? So you can't update someone else's stream session. Now, I bet you I don't know the login, which is awesome. But that's it, really? Yeah, I thought so. No, I don't know the password. Awesome, so I locked myself out. But anyway, that is how we persist things using basically using stimulus and I'm just using this little Rails request library. It's just very simple wrapper. It's just sending, let's see if we have it in there. Does it show us where we're sending? We're not pres preserving the log, but I'll, I'll show you what it adds in just quickly as well. All right, so looking in here, we can run this, but we can see when we click this button, we're s it's actually hidden all that, but it's showing that it's toggling the stream mode here to false. But if we have a look inside of our terminal you can see this sent this but if we look at the headers we can see that the cookies being sent through so that's great and where is the XCRF token I wonder where it's sending that there it is here it is so you can see here it's sending that token along all right so that's a cross-site um, request forgery protection so rails has that it built in by default and that's just being checked to make sure that this is the browser that's sending that request it's not being hacked so it's as simple as that we actually don't need to do anything with this response because you know we're just toggling a value but if we got we're getting data out of this we could use it so we could get the json so we could wait json here but we actually don't don't really care about any of this so we're just going to say await all right because that's all we're doing we're just toggling that request now if we go bang streaming done all right so this is just a quick one today it was on my mind i thought about it i was like how are we going to persist this and that's how we're going to do it all right catch you on the next one